So now I'm going to demonstrate just a few um, types of oxygen delivery systems and how you would place them on the patient and what the um, near standard is for the um, oxygen level flow. Um, you will know that some resources, you know, may vary by one or two um, levels, but for the most part, you know, we're pretty close to what the standard is. All right, so for this first one here, I'm just gonna demonstrate a simple nasal cannula. Nasal cannula is considered a low flow delivery system. And you can see that it has two prongs and those two prongs will go into the patient's nostrils. And also um, just make sure when this is ordered that you um, assess your patient first, you know, assess the respiratory status, make sure you've got their pulse oximetry on so you can monitor their oxygen levels. And also, you know, make sure that they're, it's appropriate for them. If people are mouth breathers, this isn't really gonna help um, because you have to breathe through your nose to get the oxygen. So just make sure it's an appropriate type. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this into the uh, flow meter here, or flow, oxygen flow. And since it's a low flow, we can set it um, anywhere from two to six. A real common level is at two. Um, so we're gonna set our oxygen there. And you wanna make sure the little ball is, it's kind of in the middle of that little ball on the two. And then we're gonna go ahead and place this on the patient. So you can tell that these prongs are downward. Um, you, you want to put this in downward because that's how the air is gonna flow down into the nose and into the trachea. So place them in, make sure they're positioned downward. Go around the ears. And then you don't want this too tight, but you want it tight enough where it's not gonna keep coming off. And again, this is a mannequin, so it doesn't move like a normal human would there. But that's how you would place the nasal cannula. All right, so with nasal cannula, you just wanna make sure you're looking you know, for dryness. Sometimes there'll be excessive dryness. If you are at a level of four liters or more with the nasal cannula, like four to six, you can um, add humidification to make that less dry. All right, so we're gonna take this one off and then we're going to show you the, um, the simple mask. Simple mask um, is something that can be used for flow levels of four, or I'm sorry, six to 10. And basically it's, it's just a simple mask, um, which it has air that can be exchanged through oxygen and the carbon dioxide that the patient is blowing out. So you can see that there's the, the vents on the side there. Um, this goes right over, this is kind of caught in there, right over the patient's head and on the bridge of the nose. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure that it's covering the mouth. And again, um, if this, if this type of delivery system matches what the physician wants for the patient or the provider, I should say, either way, um, it's a good one for mouth breathers because you can get that right in there or if the nasal cannula isn't appropriate. So this one here, we can. I'm just gonna set at six, right there. And that's basically what a simple mask is. You can tighten it on the sides as well if needed, if it comes off. But again, you always wanna assess for um, breakdown on the skin with these oxygen systems because skin can break down if they're wearing them for a while. All right, so we can remove this one. And then we'll go into what we call a um, non-rebreather. This one, you may see as the patient's respiratory status declines. It's usually not used routinely uh, unless the patient is having very, very low oxygenation. Um, you see this a lot if, you know, the patient's maybe to the point where they might have to go on BiPAP. Um, so th what this does, um, a non-rebreather, the patient can't get the carbon, the patient is 
is not breathing in their carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide goes out and it doesn't go back into the mask. So it stays away from going back into the mask. And also the other thing, um, we fill this bag up with oxygen, so it should be about two thirds full at all times. So that patient has that oxygen available to them at all times. And then they're not rebreathing their carbon dioxide in or it's not mixing with the, with the oxygen. So this one, like I said, is gonna be a little bit more um, higher levels of oxygen flow. So anywhere from like 10 to 15, um, I'm just gonna put it right at 15, or close to it anyway. <clears throat> and you can see the bag is already filling up with oxygen. Okay, so we fill that up, and then you can put that on the patient. Secure that, same as the simple mask, but again we have that one-way valve where we're not allowing that carbon dioxide to mix. Okay, so that is a non-rebreather. Right, and then we'll just finally we'll do the oxy mask is last. Oxy mask is a little different in that you do see uh, openings in it. So you do have that exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So um, there you see that it kind of looks like it's missing, but that's how it's meant to be. This is placed just like a regular simple mask. It doesn't, um, I mean, it is a little more comfortable because it is a little more flexible. And the level of oxygen that you can set this one at is anywhere from one to 15. Um, your FiO2 can go up to almost 80% with this one as well. So again, we're getting more of a, all right. So that is basic, our basic oxygen delivery systems. And we always wanna know when, you're, when you have a patient with oxygen, um, there is a lot of safety things you gotta think about. Um, obviously, we wanna make sure that there isn't any flammables around the patient that could cause uh, flames. And just to make sure that um, the tubing is always on kinked and you're always, whenever you're checking on your patient to make sure that they're on the right order for their oxygen level here on the flow meter. Um, because sometimes those can, those can move and you just wanna make sure you're checking that a lot. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and that that is completes our oxygen delivery systems.